So what you see here is a demonstration of the level of movement that the eye follower provides. The eye images are what the eye tracking cameras are seeing in the upper right and uh, upper left images there of the eye. And if you look in the lower right, uh, that uh, video feed of myself is as I move around the room, you can see as how the um, eye tracking cameras are automatically focusing and they're following me as I can tilt my head side to side um, and, and witness all the level of free movement there. We get about 38 inches side to side, 38 inches back and forth, uh, and 20 inches up and down. And you can see as I turn my head and come back into the view, the cameras automatically refocus. I can literally jump in my chair. Uh, and the cameras are still going to maintain an accurate image of my eye. So we're going to start a, a NIAM project here and we'll just open this tab and basically there's three different experiments we can do. The first here is a screen recording mode, a media show presentation, and a web task analysis. We're going to do a website here just for the sake of our uh, experiment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to create a new folder. Uh, we'll call this Microsoft website. So once I enter this information here, we just simply click OK, and this is going to bring us right into the experiment. So we'll have this box here where we can put in any information that we want describing the experiment. And then what we do is first we can go into our project settings, so we can modify a few different things here. The first here is the uh, second monitor feature. We can actually put up to two other monitors and so you can view this the experiment live from a, a different monitor either in a different room or what have you. Uh, we can change a few other different parameters here. Um, also how we define a fixation saccadic movement um, as well as a few other features and this is where you would modify um, any kind of uh, data analysis beforehand. The next step what we're going to do is add in our different subjects. So what I'm going to do is just add in 10 really quick and we can put in all the relevant information. Um, so the next step would be to put in the actual URL that we're going to be tracking. We can put in as many as we want and have them go one after another or sequence them how we like. We're just going to do Microsoft.com here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type in some, uh, some instructions which are going to prompt the user to find the surface as well as find where to, to buy the device. And if I click on that tab right above it where it says display instructions, it's going to actually present those instructions on the upper left corner of the screen once we get into the experiment. So I'll click that button there. Make sure everything's okay. And we'll start the, uh, we'll save that data. So the next step is we can just jump right into the experiment. So I just press record and what this is going to do is prompt the calibration procedure. This is going to take us just under 10 seconds here, but you can see my eye uh, images in the upper right and left. I start the procedure and we're just going to follow this dot and what the system is doing is it's actually learning the shape of my cornea um, as I look around the, uh, follow that dot around the screen. So the instructions are, are in the upper left corner there. Uh, you can see it says find the surface. And I have no idea that I'm being tracked. I just am interacting with the website naturally as I browse through. I find the surface here. And where do we buy? We buy it here, it looks like. So it looks like we found that. And once we're done, we've, uh, we looks like we've completed our task. What we'll do is we'll just go to the upper right part of the screen where it says finish task, and now it's compressing that uh, eye tracking data. So from here, we'll just do a new analysis. We'll actually do a playback. So we'll do a screen playback here. And so what you can see, this is actually a playback of the gaze information. That red dot with the green crosshairs is my gaze information, and that yellow dot is actually the mouse events that are taking place. Um, so as I move around the screen, you can, you can see that relative information, um, how I'm interacting with the web page. This is the exact playback of what I just did there. Great. 
now what we can do is we, we're going to show you what we call our scan path analysis. So I'll just click this new measurement. I'll click the, the first page that we went on the home page there. I select the subject in the home page. And then what we'll do is we'll just um, we'll load that here. So this is going to present uh, an image of the entire URL that we just looked at. So I'm just going to zoom in here. And so when I play this back, each one of these little dots that you see on the screen is all the fixations and saccadic movements that are taking place. So you can actually see where my eyes fixated when I was on this um, the, the home page here. Now I can show you the full, the full path here. And what the size of those dots indicate is the duration that that took place. Now there's a few numbers within each one of these dots. Now the first number that you see is the order that that fixation took place, the second is the duration, and the third is the length and time that it took from the start of that experiment. And also what I can do is go back on this bar here and I can move back in time when these different events happen so you can see precisely down to the millisecond when these fixations started and, and go back through. What I'm going to do here too is I'm going to synchronize this so what I can do is take that uh, scan path analysis I'll move it to the side here and what I'll do is I'm going to actually compare this to another measurement. This new measurement what we're going to do here, this is called our uh, gaze time plot. So what we're doing here is we're actually showing you the XY coordinates of the eyes in relation to uh, pixels which are on the left side of the screen and then on the bottom you have time. So the red there is the X coordinate, the green is the Y, these are pixels and that is over time here. What I'm also going to do is add in pupil information. So this is pupil diameter in millimeters radius. I'll turn it into 3D dimensional, or th three dimensional here to make it a little easier for you to see. And what we'll do is we'll actually synchronize this data as well. So you'll see, I'll just click this synchronize button. And once I play this, you can actually see on the screen um, both the eye information, the pupil information, as well as all the fixations and saccades that are taking place in that video playback. All this information is exportable. You can um, you know, digest this information in real time, play it back, compare this to multiple subjects. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do here. So very neat measurement to see pupil information. We can break it down by each eye individually um, or uh, both eyes uh, combined. The next measurement that we'll show you here is the classic heat map. So, what we'll do is we'll just change it up a little bit. Um, we have various heat maps that we can apply filters to. And what this is based on is actually ba uh, gaze duration. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. And this is really neat when you have multiple, multiple subjects. Uh, you can get a really nice average. Uh, but this is just my first reading. And this is based off actually fixation count now. You saw that I changed that there. Um, and we can apply different filters as, as if you'd like there and, and see different versions of it. Also, we can decrease the sigma, which will actually make those um, areas more defined. So you can see how that shrinks the, the heat map there a little bit. And also, we have what we call attentional landscape. So we actually take almost a three-dimensional cut of this image, and you can see the various sigmas that will actually indicate the duration of time that we looked in, it, in certain areas. The next uh, measurement we'll show you here is uh, areas of interest analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. And we can either put in rectangles, ellipses, polygons. We can group them separately. And so what I'm going to do here is put a rectangle around the first slider bar and just write that into the area of interest box and press enter. So what we're doing here is we're populate, populating all the various areas of interest that we want to look at. And so what we'll do here is we'll put in the navigation bar as well. So we'll type in nav bar. And then we'll do a rectangle, let's say, around the Microsoft logo as well. And we'll do one around the search box really quickly. So we can populate as many areas of interest as we want. We can change the colors around. We can go back at any time and manipulate them as well. So you can collect data um, and put in these areas of interest at any time. So. If you had 100 subjects come through and you didn't, uh, you know, you, you realized you needed to change the areas of interest or run a different study, 
um, that's no problem. You can come back at any time and do that. So I think that's enough um, enough areas of interest at this point. But you can see here, um, we'll, uh, we'll add one more in there for the sake of this study. We'll try to get some, some good data for you. As you can see here, I can change the colors of the various areas of interest. So we can distinguish between certain areas that we want. We can come in and move things around. We can manipulate the size or the shape of these areas of interest here. And you can see how the, all these areas of interest just populate on the left-hand side here. So now we'll go back in and we'll actually analyze these areas of interest. So we'll break it down into first, second, third, and fourth pass, as well as AOI totals, area of interest totals. So what you can see here is we can break it down into several different things. Uh, time to first fixation, gaze duration, fixation count, mean fixation duration, and AOI hit. So you can see all the various uh, areas of interest that are in this bar graph here. Um, and it's going to show us the relative times in milliseconds um, that the gaze interacted with this particular web page. And of course, we can export all this data. So what we can do is put it in all these various formats. Um, we'll put it into Excel really quickly for you. So this quick uh, chart is going to show you each individual area of interest and also the related gaze data in milliseconds in relation to that. And once again, what we'll do here is then is also relate that uh, gaze data in relation to the fixation. So we can see all the pre saccadic amplitudes and uh, post saccadic amplitudes as well as duration information, x, y coordinates, um, all that relative information. So you can take this data, put it into another program such as SPSS or um, what, what have you and, and run your different regressions and studies against. So that sums up areas of interest for the most part. You can populate as many as you'd like. Um, and you can see here we have all the various URLs that we visited. Um, just to give you a good example, there's another unique feature uh, within NIAN, and this is what we call web task analysis. And what this is going to do is actually going to take every subject's path that they took through the web pages um, to get to the final goal. So it creates a very cool uh, spider map, actually, uh, spider web, I should say. Um, of the exact path that each individual took to get to the final goal. So as you can see here, it creates these really nice trails. The, the first, this page here is actually the home page that every subject started out, started out on. And you can see both the exiting and entry points to each individual web page. So this is really neat when you want to look at things like, you know, this uh, various subjects went to one particular page and got lost, for instance, and they went back. And you can really see the dy dynamically how people interacted and traveled through the experiment, which enables you to then go back and say, hey, um, you know, what is it about this particular web page that caused uh, these subjects to go this way? And you can create some really cool analysis that way. And for the most part, that's, uh, that's a very high ever, uh, overview of NIAN. Um, we appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this, and uh, we hope to speak with you soon.